Is it time to wildcard? And if so, should you go Mo Salah or no Salah? Welcome to the Gianni Batici YouTube show. Hope you guys are well. There are being wildcards activated left, right and centre. But is it the right decision to go this week? Well, let's start to decide and put together a wildcard team and then we can help evaluate both the pros and the cons. The top line pros for those on a wildcard right now are, we're seeing loads of red arrows. So number one, you can stop the rot, right? You can, you can change your team. Number two, you can build team value, right? We like that. And number three, you can jump on players that perhaps you don't have that you think you need. So Spurs players, Villa players, those two teams are right at the top of the ticker. In fact, let's have a very quick look at that ticker now, shall we, from Fancy Football Scout. I've filtered it for the last six weeks. You can see there, you're going to need Spurs and Villa players, aren't you? Yeah. Now, if you haven't got them, maybe a wildcard is the only route. Okay, the negatives of a wildcard this week. Number one, you can perhaps get to a wildcard team with no Salah fairly easy. Myself, I've already got Madison and Son, right? Maybe with a minus four, I can already get to that team. Similar. Number two, I don't know if I fully want to commit to a whole new structure and if I know the answer of Salah or no Salah. And I think I need to know that answer before I wildcard. The other negative is by going now, you can't go slightly later when we know we're going to get the Man City blank game week and we might know more about doubles on the horizon in and around that sort of festive period. Okay, so let's build those teams. First of all, we're going to build the no Salah draft that I think I prefer, right? Um, we're not going to spend long chatting on goalkeepers. What's the point? Uh, and again, we still don't know the best two keepers. Another reason perhaps why you don't want a wild card. I'm going to put Turner in there because he's the cheapest. Although I think he'll lose his spot at some point. And I'm going to go Raya because you're getting an Arsenal keeper for 4.8. You're spending less than 9 million on keepers, no matter what direction you go. If you go Areola or whoever. Um, and that's, that's a good thing, I think. You want to keep your keeper spend low. Uh, in the defence, we've gone for all fullbacks. Clean sweep. Uh, it's Lupinan stays. Brighton have good fixtures from 10. Um, Cash, who I think will be my transfer in this week in my actual team. Cash has been amazing. Highest expected goal involvement of any defender in the game so far. Trippier feels like he's a set and forget. Um, and then I'm going to go Sue Fowl because he's playing well on the right. West Ham have got great fixtures. And then you drop a Dogi or Poro in. I'm going to go Dogi just because he's a little bit cheaper. Again, Spurs fixtures are tasty. So that back five is fun, right? There's no, there's no four point million option there. You can play the rotation game. Always have three of them with good fixtures. Then we look at the midfield five. Now remember, we're doing this team with no Salah, but it's a wildcard team. So Saka stays. And that's the key thing. If you have Salah, you probably can't have Saka. But look, Saka's putting up great numbers. Salah's not putting up the certain numbers where you go, I need him every week. Yet you could argue Saka is, and he's a lot cheaper. Um, and he's given away loads of pens, which he won't always do. He won't always do when the game's tight. He's given away pens when the game is won. Havertz, with 3-0 up, take the pen. Um, that won't always be the case. So when you add a few extra penalties to Saka's points, you're really going big. I'm going to go Diaby there because I think Villa coverage is so important. So we've got Cash and Diaby. And this team might not have Ollie Watkins. Um, Luis Diaz is a way of covering Salah points, I think. So we're going to drop Diaz in there. He seems nailed on the left. And the Liverpool fixtures are good. So unlucky to have the goal ruled out, wasn't he? Um, so I like Luis Diaz. And I think he's gone a little bit under the radar. And then there's two Spurs midfielders. A non-negotiable in any wildcard team. Then to make it easy for ourselves for funds, and I can afford this draft, I think by 0.4, um, we're going to put the West Ham kid in at 4.3, a bit of a throwaway option. So we have a dead spot in our teams because we don't have a dead spot at the back. So we can have a dead spot up front. So we've always got two playing subs. Um, I'm going to go Darwin again as a way of trying to cover Salah's points. So we've got Darwin-Diaz combination. I like that. And then Erling Haaland. So what does this team have? A good spread of funds. What doesn't it have? No Salah, sure. It has no extra Man City. Again, I think those on wildcard are probably just going Haaland. City's fixtures are really tough. It's got no United and no Chelsea. I think I'm all right with that. It's got no Jared Bowen. He's, he's the, the obvious miss. You could go Bowen instead of Diaby. There's an option there. You could go Bowen instead of Diaz. 
So how do we get a Salah team from this team? And what do we think of this team? I mean, let me know in the comments. Let's just go through the non-negotiables in this team. And then we can look at the players we'll take out to accommodate Salah. So straight away, you look, you're going, you need um, your Spurs mids, non-negotiable. Haaland, non-negotiable. Some of those defenders like Stupanan and Adoji, I think are non-negotiables. So how do we get Salah in? Well, let's just, let's just have a bit of fun. There's only four transfers needed from this team. So straight away, Salah's going to come in um, and we're going to take Saka out. I mentioned Saka's going to have to come out. You can't have Saka and Salah and the Spurs guys and Haaland. So Saka out, Salah in, right? Now we need to save some money. So we're going to start doing that. And we're going to do that by downgrading or, or selling some of our Liverpool players. Because if you've got Salah, you don't need Diaz, in my opinion. So Diaz goes, and let's go Neto. Proper cheap option. Neto's flying at the moment. To have a Salah draft, you need players like Neto in your 11. You can't have your enablers always on your bench. If you've got a Salah, you need an enabler in your 11 quite often. Um, so Neto comes in. Okay. Now, sad state of affairs here because if you go Mo Salah and you go Haaland and you go the Spurs, lads, you can't have Trippier. Sorry, guys. Trippier's got to go as well. So if Trippier goes... Okay, I'm going Trippier to Kabore. Let's put a, a four million defender in because the defence is already strong. That allows me one final move to get this team slightly better. So we're going to go Darwin out because, again, he's a bit of a minute's risk. Um, we've got Salah already and we want Ollie Watkins anyway. And I couldn't afford Watkins in draft one, so draft two we can have Watkins. So the Salah team is better because it's got Salah but so much worse because it's not got Trippier. So much worse because it's not got Trippier. And then Darwin, Watkins, you could argue there's maybe not between much between the two in terms of the next five, six weeks. So which one do we prefer, guys? Let me know in the comments. I look at them both and go, I don't love either. I don't love either enough to hit that button. But if I'm wildcarding in game week eight or nine, I'm probably producing a very similar team. Like, one or two changes based on the weekend that we've just seen in game week eight. Maybe I make a, a, a knee-jerk change. But I think this would be my wildcard team. Probably the first draft without Salah in game week eight, nine. And then I look at that team and go, it's not. It's pretty much my team. Like, there's not a huge amount um, between it. I've got the Spurs guys. I'll have Matty Cash. I'll have Trippier. I've got Darwin and Haaland. Yeah, my keepers are different and some of my fringe players... But I'm okay with that. And then I go, I just don't need to wildcard. Maybe I need a four-point hit. So let, let's look at the fixtures um, again from the scout ticker. And the reason why we want to go big on Spurs and big on Villa are simply form and fixtures, right? Spurs don't have European football as well, which is a big, big plus at the moment when all the other teams are playing European football. And Villa in Europe are rotating a lot, which is a good thing. Um, because then it, it means we know the Premier League team. So Spurs have Luton and Fulham in the next two. You don't get too much better than that. And then it's Palace, Chelsea, Wolves and Villa. Yes, please. Aston Villa, well, the two best home ties you could wish for at the moment are probably Luton at home, Fulham at home. Okay, maybe Sheffield United and Burnley too. But they've got two of those home fixtures in the next five. They've also got Wolves and West Ham and Forest. Great run. Great, great, great run. So if you need to wildcard to accommodate Spurs and Villa, that's okay. But my question to you is, can you just accommodate Spurs and Villa by free transfers and maybe a four-point hit? Because I think you can. And you don't need Villa this week either. So you could prioritise your transfers towards making sure you've got Madison Son. And then next week, you start to... Well, knowing Villa have got two homes against West Ham and Luton, you start to jump on a Watkins or a Diaby or a Matty Cash. My transfer is going to be Cash this week because I can make a defensive transfer and I've got the Spurs players. But I'm not so sure you need to wildcard. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we said we're all going to need to wildcard for one man and one man only. And that was Mo Salah. We were like, we're all going to have to wildcard because Mo Salah is the best player in the game at the moment. He's ticking along so, so nicely. But since that, since we were all saying we were going to have to wildcard for Mo Salah, when you look at the returns fine like he's been good but he's not been like blowing us away in fact this season Bowen has more points than Salah Son has more points than Salah Saka has more points than Salah and we're looking at selling Saka to get Salah in 
you can also potentially cover some of those Salah points by a Luis Diaz or a Darwin. So yeah, look, the numbers have been good this season. He's got four assists and he's never had the really the assists in his game, not high numbers, but he's only had three goals and he has had a pen in there. So it's not the explosive Salah we've been used to. Like he's had two 10 pointers, two 10 pointers. Good, but not amazing. Not amazing for Mo Salah. 31% owned. I don't think we need to be scared of going without him. If you're wildcarding, you're probably going to go there because you, you're wildcarding to make changes to your team and many don't have him. But he's not an absolute must-have. And I would argue, this is a bold claim, Kieran Trippier is as much as a must-have as Mo Salah. And if you're wildcarding to get Salah in, you can't have Trips. Trips is so good. 38 points in the last three game weeks. 30 points in the last two and 18 and a 12. He's flying. He's flying. And I certainly wouldn't be compromising on sacking off Trippier to get Mo Salah. So let me know what you think, guys, uh, to both those drafts. Hey, have you heard about my uh, WhatsApp group? I'm sure you have. I've mentioned it a few times. You can become a YouTube member. Just click join or there's a link in the description and you can join my WhatsApp group, um, which includes world number one from last year. The winner of FPL, Ali Hangarov's in the chat. Um, and the chat's loads of fun. Um, so you, if you become an ultra tier member, join the ultras tier, you can become a WhatsApp member. If you want to be a squad tier, I prioritise all your comments in these videos as well. So if you've got any transfer questions, let me know and I'll get back to you straight away. As always, I love it when you guys hit that like and subscribe button. So thank you for supporting the channel. I'll see you in a day or two when we're going to have a look at my team selection for Gaming Kate. So stay tuned for that one and I'll see you very soon. Take care, guys. Thank you.